love talking to this guy week in and week out. He is one of the leaders of the Vols, and we're going to talk about leadership and what that means and who are going to be some of Tennessee's leaders in the 2023 season. Also, a coaching change that I think uh, most people are pretty excited about. Let's discuss that with Cooper Mays. It's the Vol Report with Coop, brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. Integrity matters right there in Knoxville, your HVAC dealership. Coop, you're in the off season. Are you getting any rest at all? Or are you back at lifting all the time and getting massive and huge and strong? Yeah, trying trying to get the best of both worlds, but you know, I've been I've been doing I've been doing pretty good with sleep. I've been falling asleep. I just my I feel like now I'm doing school like more than I ever have. So I'm basically sleep, like I fall asleep at like ten thirty, like no questions asked. So sure. you're getting as old as me. That's <laughs> all. I feel like it sometimes. <laughs> hey, um, let me ask you about Alec Ablin. Um, he is the new tight ends coach. He steps up and and replaces essentially Alex Golish, who went to South Florida, who was coaching tight ends. But he's also worked with the offensive line. So what's your what are your thoughts on Abe's as he likes to be called? Yeah, Abe's Abe's is probably one of my favorite people on staff. Honestly, like he's he's pretty behind the scenes. Like nobody really knew about him until recently. But um, everybody in the building knows, you know, what Aves is about and what he brings to the table. He's a, you know, a wealth of knowledge. And I, I've talked about it on other places, but I mean, for sure, just one of the most intelligent people as far as football goes in our building. Yeah. Um, I, t- I told a lot of the tight ends that he's a wealth of knowledge and that they're they're so lucky to have him because I want him to be back in the line room. But, you know, it's great for him. I love it. Now I was talking to Jacob um, and he's Jacob Warren. And Alex, a young guy, I think he's 27. Um, and a lot of times you associate young guys with the raw, raw stuff. Um, but he's really not like that, is he? No, no. Abe's, Abe's honestly, me and Abe's are, are, you know, pretty similar probably on service level. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of differences somewhere. But as, as, as far as it goes, how, you know, me and Abe's are, is we're, we're pretty alike, if, if that can, you know, make sense. I'm not – I'm I'm not the rah rah guy. He's not either. But you know, he he's really intelligent, really smart, and and just he's he's a great person to talk to and everything, and and just a great relationship builder. It's it's been I guess the third time with um, Joey and Kelsey that you guys have decided the coaching staff has decided to um, uh, hire from within, um, promote from within. Your your thoughts on that, just from the surface level, what do you think? Yeah, it, it makes sense. I mean, we've got such a, a, you know, a niche, you know, spot in college football with our offense and everything. So, I, I mean, promoting from within is probably the the, the easiest and, and, you know, the best option a lot of the time. So, you know, I'm not – obviously, I'm not the one making those <laughs> – you know, making those decisions or, you know, that's why they get paid the big bucks, you know, to make those decisions. But, you know, that's that's my two cents. That's probably why they do it. How hard do you think it would be to come from – a pro style system, high formation, something else, and come into this. And how long do you think it would take to get acclimated? It seems like it'd be really difficult. Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, I don't know about for a coach, but from a player's perspective, it took a lot of us a, you know, a good chunk of time. But you know, it, like like I've said before, football can only be played so many ways. So I mean, we've we've got a, a small little system here that that we have working for us that is you know kind of rare and you know, probably one of a kind if you want to be real. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's still it's still football. Yep. I was um, really happy to hear about Darnell Wright at the Super Bowl – or sorry, the uh, Senior Bowl. And he performed really well. I talked to some people off the record uh, this week who said he performed w- really well. But I knew talking to you I wanted to bring it up, but also knew you wouldn't be surprised at all. No, yeah, not, not surprised one bit. He, uh, I, I texted him, you know, and, and basically told him I, after I texted him before the week started and told him that he was going to kill it. And then, you know, good luck and everything. And then at the end of the week, I, you know, I texted him when he got the honor of, you know, practice player of the week or whatever. I told him that, you know, I, I told you so, you know, I called it, I knew it was going to happen. So he, he knows I have a lot of belief in him and I'm, you know, I'm just really proud of how far he's come and, and what all he's been doing. I know you, you've said many times he can do backflips and all that stuff, and he's the most athletically gifted big man that you've played with. But uh, I also got a story from Jacob about how he could get a little riled up. 
Is he, is he one of the, the toughest, meanest big men you've gone against, or does that go to somebody else? Man, he's definitely he's definitely super tough. You know, he's he's been relatively uninjured most like probably the last four years. You know, for the overwhelming majority of four years, he's you know been available and never missed a practice that I've been around him really. So he's extremely tough. You know, he's not he's not the guy that's you know you look at him and you're like oh he's crazy. He's he's more of a uh, you know a technician and stuff, and he he's a good finisher, but not not somebody that you like you know go up to and is like. Oh, I'm scared of this guy. Like he's he's a very loving guy, and it it takes a lot to get him riled up. But you know, when he when he does, he uh, he'll get really angry. He'll get really get really upset. You know, <laughs> but but you know, for the most part, Darnell, he's he's amazing. I'm not sure what that beep is. So, is it like a switch getting flipped? Have you have you seen that go off before with him? Yes. Um, during the Kentucky game, there was you know a late tackle that that wasn't even counted as a sack, and I told him it wouldn't, but um. I think Hendon was Hendon was basically, you know, a couple seconds after the play had started, you know, a long time. Darnell had been protecting for a long time. And, you know, Hendon ran outside of the pocket and the the guy that he was latched onto ended up making the tackle. So he thought he gave up a sack, which it wasn't. It was just a tackle for loss. And um he he was he, you couldn't even talk to him for the rest of the game. He was so upset. Just just so 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 upset with himself. Cause I don't I don't I don't think for the rest of the for the rest of the year or the year before, like for the previous part of the year. He had given up any any pressures or anything like nobody had even gotten close to the quarterback. So he he was he was in a certain mode that night for sure. I want to ask you about another uh, teammate that you had that that didn't get invited to the combine. I was a little bit uh, surprised. Ronnie, the Vol Report with Cooper Mays is brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, CityHeatAndAir.com. Integrity matters. That HVAC unit might not be need to be replaced. And with spring coming up, I'm going to tell you you need to reach out to city heating and air conditioning if your HVAC unit goes down and they tend to do that around spring. I was surprised Jerome Carvin didn't get invited to the combine. You? Yeah, definitely upset me. I mean, I, I you know, a guy that just has played so much ball and, and been such a, you know, kind of just a, a I don't even know what to call it, but just a, a centerpiece of kind of SEC football for the longest bit and especially Tennessee football. I mean, he's, he's, you know, played in 60 games or something like that, 61. I mean, th just the to not put a guy like that in a place to promote his skills to the next level, I mean, I, I think it was wrong. But, you know, I don't, I don't know, I guess. Well, I was surprised. I mean, I, I think he's got the physical ability. But um, there's certainly players that are drafted each and every year that don't make the combine. So if you had a chance to visit with him, is it, what were his thoughts? I haven't. I mean that that came out I think maybe last night, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't talked to him. I mean, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't reach out. I talked to. I texted him a couple of days ago. Told him I missed him and everything. He told me he would back be back in Knoxville, you know, kind of soon, and that that we would hang out and everything. But I haven't gotten to talk to him since since that news broke. And I know a guy that you like a lot, um, Omari Thomas, uh, defensive lineman, and. You know, he's uh, kind of a quiet guy. We don't hear a lot from him. We don't hear a lot from defensive linemen in general. Um, but he was named to the SEC Leadership Council, which was was super cool. It might have surprised some people who, who didn't know him. What can you tell me about uh, Omari and him as a person and why he might be selected to that? O Omari is is a very special guy. You know, he's, he's a guy that went on the ball leaders trip with me that we've talked about before. Um, he's He's – He's really a great leader, but but just overall as a person, just you know, somebody that that you want to be more like, if that makes sense. I mean, he's 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 just a great guy. And then on top of that, he's consistent every day with with everything that he does and the person he is. And then moreover is really the fact that he just he's he's his personality is just super infectious. I mean, he he's I mean, if there's a dance circle going on, he will be the he'll be one of the first people to jump into it, no reservations. I mean just like when you're sitting in the back and you're like, dang, look at all those people up there. Like you're looking at Amari and you're like, man, I wish I could be more like him. <laughs> so that, that's, that's how I would explain it. He's, he's, he's awesome. So Cooper, what do you think about Amari and his physical ability and where he might uh, end up? How, how close is he to his potential? Still got a ways to go. Oh yeah. His, his potential is as far as he wants to go. I mean, he's, he's a great dedicated guy and, and definitely one of our, our best defensive linemen and, and just best defenders in general. So 
he, he's a guy that's going to get, you know, drafted in the next year or so or whenever he wants to come out. So he, he's really good. We talked about how you wanted to step up and have and be more of a leader. And you've already been that to some extent, uh, quite an extent, I would say. Um, and now Amari, I'll view him as a leader. I, I view Jacob Warren as the same thing. But who are some of the other guys that you would you would expect in this particular year after losing some guys to the NFL and graduation to step up in a leadership role? Definitely uh, the first person you're going to look at is Joe Milton. You know, he's he's the quarterback, you know, got to got to be a leader in his role. And and I think he's done a great job of that. Even last year, I think the experience he got was, you know, invaluable when you look at him being able to come in and play a few games. So and him being able to learn after him. And that was really good for him. Um, Omari on the defensive side of the ball, Jacob Warren, me, Aaron Beasley. I mean, there's Brew McCoy. There's 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 leaders. Jabari Small. I mean, I could keep going. There's there's leaders all over the place. And that kind of speaks volumes to, you know, just the program that they've installed and, and just the way that they run things. It's funny you mentioned Brew's name. Um, Brew's the transfer. And I would imagine in your first year, it's hard to be a leader. But what are your what are your thoughts on him from a personality standpoint and a leadership standpoint? I, I really like Brew. I mean, I, I tell everybody any chance I get and then they ask about him that, you know, he's a great person and that I love being around him. He's and more than anything, I mean, you can watch every game and then you'll see him out there being a physical wide receiver, which is, you know, hard to find nowadays. There's not a lot of receivers that like to get physical in the run game when the ball's not coming to him. And he's one of those guys that just plays hard. And, and you can just tell he loves the game and enjoys being out there. So I really like Brew. I, I heard this question. I'm going to go out on the left field if you don't care. But I heard this question of a Super Bowl interview. And, and when when you're on Radio Row, they just bring people in one after another. So Marcus Spears, who you might remember way before your time, but played at LSU, played for the Dallas Cowboys, was asked um, last time he he got in to the point where it was really emotional on the field, like uh, he saw somebody lose control or he he lost control. Has, has that ever happened to you where you saw somebody else kind of go a little bit too far on the other side of the ball? Uh, there's there's a lot of examples that you can probably find, <laughs> and you don't have to name anybody. Uh man, I I, w- I will say our our any any team that I've ever been around, there's never been crazy stuff happen. My dad tells me a lot of stories about crazy stuff that's happened, but I mean, I don't really I I kind of envy him a little bit because he tells me all these you know these fight stories and just stuff that breaks out, and you know we're I feel like this generation is kind of discouraged from stuff like that, so. I mean, people definitely cross the line. I mean, people spit on people and stuff. I don't, but that's 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 some pretty disgusting stuff, in my opinion. I don't like that at all. It's real disgusting. How yes. do you re, how do you not react to that? I would have trouble not throwing a punch. I, uh, I I tell people I would never I would never blame anybody for throwing a punch after being like if my player if my if my player and I was the head coach and my player came over the sidelines after getting ejected for throwing a punch. And he told me that, you know, he spit on him. I don't really I, – I feel like I couldn't get mad at him because that's just like the ultimate form of disrespect kind of as a man. So, like, I would never be mad at anybody for reacting that way because I, I, I don't think I could control myself. So, What else crosses the line? That That is a definite, no question about it. What else on the field is just an – it's understood that you don't do it? Um, Any type of – any type of – blocks that land kind of from the side or behind anytime somebody dives at legs or try anything intentional to hurt somebody is, is very frowned upon, I would say. But other than that, there's not a lot of stuff that, that really gets, you know, reprimanded, I guess, on the football field. Has that ever ever happened to you? You thought somebody was trying to hurt you purposefully? You're getting no names. No, I, I don't think, I don't think it, I don't think I don't know. I don't think anybody's tried to hurt me intentionally. I'm sure somebody probably has, but I don't know. I just don't play that way. And I think if usually if if the person you're playing is pretty you know sane and a pretty stable person, if you're not doing, if you're not doing something like that, they they won't try to do it to you. So I don't know. I'm pre- I feel like I'm pretty respectful. So what about the bottom of a pile? Oh yeah, I've heard stories about people like breaking fingers and stuff. That's that's terrible. My dad always taught me to like never never be like you never 
I never jump on top of piles or get on the bottom of them intentionally, and you never stand around them. So, because my dad taught me that if you stand around the pile, then you get hit, like you get you get decked from from any angle. It doesn't really matter. So my dad always taught me to stay away from the pile. Don't don't get hit. So when you see a pile, you turn and walk away. Yes. Either if it's just stood up and there's a pile, or really the pile's on the ground. If the pile's moving, if it's like people, if it's the running back wrapped up by like eight people, then jump in. But like if there's a pile on the ground, there's no reason to stand beside it. Like go ahead and go ahead and get as far away from possible from it as I possible. remember I remember you pouncing on uh Hendon Hooker fumble at one point and you said quick like a cat have you ever been on the bottom of a pile i can't remember if that play you were in the bottom of a pile that, yeah that's definitely the last time i was you know in the bottom of a pile it, that hurts so bad because i dove on the football which the coaches tell you you know this is how you this is how you dive on a fumble which is not what i did like you don't dive on top of it you like try to like cradle it if that makes sense like dive on your side and cradle it but i mean if you see a ball on the ground like I, I just saw it and I dove. So I la- ended up landing on it, which was cool. But the problem is another, like, 300-pound defensive lineman jumped right on top of me. So, like, I just got, like, squished between, like, a football in my sternum and then, like, a defensive lineman that just, like, dove right on top of me. So felt like I, like, could not breathe. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. I don't like it. One bit. But, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. Well, maybe next time you should just ask Josh Heupel if you can scoop and score. How about that? Yeah, hey, next time maybe. I, I don't know if I'd take it 80, but I could probably take it a couple yards for sure. I'd say you could. The ball report with Cooper Mays is brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. Again, spring is coming, and you need to make sure you get that HVAC taken care of if it goes down. And you'll know that with City, integrity matters, and they're going to make sure if you just need a part, you just need a part. You don't need it all replaced. All right, who wins the Super Bowl, Coop? Some some people are going to see this afterwards, and they're going to say you were wrong. But I just want to, for the record, it, it went before. Who who do you like in the Super Bowl? Who wins? Yeah, I got I got to go with the Chiefs for for Trey. I feel like it would be wrong if I didn't. So we're going to go with the Chiefs. Do you really think that, or you just want that? I want that. I don't really know who's going to win. I I like I said, I don't really, I don't watch enough NFL football to really make an educated guess and educated prediction. So. I feel like I need to withhold it, but my hope is that that Trey gets his, you know, his first ring. Well, I've talked about football a lot, and a lot of people say I'm not educated. So there you go. Man, everybody's <laughs> not educated to somebody. So <laughs> he's uh, Cooper Mays. I'm Dave Hooker. The Vol Report brought to you by City Heating and Air. Cityheatandair.com. City Heating and Air Conditioning. Integrity matters. <laughs>